um, old business. We have the Lighting Festival, Governor's Conference, Colorado National Park trip, Trips and Advertising, Marketing RFP, mm -hmm. Final Edits and Issuance, mm -hmm. Destination Sorry. Blueprint, Other New Business. We have Voter Guide Information, Smithsonian Exhibit, Mr. Chapin. Um, introduce and discuss tourism event incubator and discuss city staff and downtown roles. Um, we have some miscellaneous from board members, discussion of the agenda for the next meeting, and then confirm any issues with the agenda at this hand. Make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Old business. First is lighting festival. So we, we saw last week our presentation from Brett uh, Ferris. Uh, I think, what are we discussing today? How do we feel about it? I like how we feel about it. If we want to approve um, budget for it, yeah, we should probably do it ASAP, ASAP. So I think we should figure out if we want to do it or not today and move forward immediately. We do, because okay. it's limited to time. So. Yes. Um, so we offered some um, offerings. I think the lowest one we had was 10 projectors. Uh, 10 projectors, 18 pieces, 31,600. 12 pieces, 7 projectors, 27,900. That's the smallest one. Um, I think he did say he would be open to doing something smaller for us. Am I remembering that correctly? Yes. Believe so. Well, the other question is, I mean, we don't necessarily have to provide 100% of the funding. So if we wanted to do a chunk and then say, hey, we'll help you solicit sponsors or something like that, we could approach it that way. I don't think we have enough. I Even if we wanted to, so I don't think we could fund that much. Um, so from what I understand, and maybe you can help with this, but for first time festivals, I believe it's ten thousand dollars is the max yeah, but I didn't plus an advertising that. budget. Would, would this fall under the same thing if it's presented by the city? I mean, if it's a city, I'm not sure. And and I thought the ten thousand dollars that was the grant, but I didn't think the tourism was giving that anymore. They're not, so now we don't have a no. So it's open. It doesn't have to be advertising or marketing, and so we're trying to expand the balance of what's in that. Line item. Um, I should check and see what it is. Well, we can ask this guy. Yeah, I can ask him. That's fine. We have a long time. Oh, good. We have questions for you. That's fine. Yes. Yes. Fire away with questions. So, we're discussing the lighting festival okay. um, that was presented by Brett Ferris. Yeah. Um, we were wondering exactly how, if we decide to fund that, would we fund it, and what would the budget be? Yeah, um, Brett sent me a proposal. Let me pull it up and I'll tell you what his initial price is. So we do have that info, yeah. unless it has changed. Um, so the lowest. He sent me a revised one uh, on it yesterday afternoon. Uh, okay. So let me just pull up what the price was in that. One question was Is this a city yeah. event? It, it, well, um, I think the idea is the city would sponsor this programming event, but it would tie in with the Winter Festival. That's the main question I have. Do we want to do that during the major festival? Yeah, and no decisions have been made. That's in February, 2nd to the 4th. So that gives us a few months to get it worked out. Yeah. And then I can tell them. I, I apologize, I couldn't be at the last meeting. What did you all think of the idea just in concept? Is it something that you all think would be? Brett probably likes organized. Presentation. Yeah. Um, I like it. I think it's worth a shot. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's. I think it's cool. Um, I don't think it's maybe as novel as many people might like, right. think it is. Um, but I think it's still think it's really sweet. Um, I think it's more of uh, something that's for locals and regionals as opposed to a wider tourist drop. Um, but I think overall, it's a it'd be a great thing for the city. Um, and what I like the most about it is that. Um, he spoke to his pitch, but it really helps foster that connection to your city because you're out exploring, so you walk from site to site. Yeah, make a little night of it. You might stop somewhere, get some drinks or something. So. Exactly. And um, 
So I've had some conversations. So as far as what Duke presented to you all, let's kind of keep that uh, on the back burner. He was working with the Fox Theater Alliance um, on some of his thoughts. So we'll kind of keep that separate. Um, but for you all, for your purposes, I think it would be you know what Brett's proposing. So he basically is looking at a sixty-eight thousand six hundred dollar investment, um, and that I think that's close to what his previous proposal. Sixty-eight. We, we saw one that was for oh, right. right. Ten projectors is what we're looking at. Yeah, <laughs> thirty-one. Thirty-one thousand six hundred. Sorry, I looked at the first number. Yeah. And, and Steve, was that still in December? Because that was what he was initially so, proposing. Yeah, so it was in December originally, but um, there's been some thoughts, and I would love you all to see that and, and Amanda too about maybe tying in with the Winter Festival um, as, as, a, as another option. Um, so it could be a standalone festival. Whatever you want it to be. Are, are you still working on some videos and stuff for some of your things? Or? Um, I, I am. I've just been mostly on hold um, just for access okay. reasons. Yeah. Um, because that might be access. something that you could then use in a future video for the art. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If we, do, we do stuff like that. Um, I would, you can always update it. That's yeah. the great thing about digital stuff is we update and you can target it to the season. If we have an event like this going on, we would want a little promo video for it to advertise, even, even a short one. And I think ongoing, if this was something we embrace as a community, it would be um, that this, this proposal contemplates, I think, renting projectors, but I think it would be a better investment for us just to purchase some um, and then work with local artists to um, you know, create some content that we can display throughout the year, um, that type of thing. I agree with that. We had a little discussion on that as well. Maybe we bought one. Maybe it just kind of depends yeah. on what the price is. We want to a little there. Yeah. I thought about the nieces buying a couple of those. No. I thought yeah. she found some of One thing I did add, because I have worked with the same thing, yeah. and, uh, and uh, I've done an amphitheater in Canyon, and the, the maintenance cost is, uh, it is pretty healthy because they, uh, they, you know, you get dust and the ones we had had big gloves over them so, you know, to protect them from the weather, but it was still, uh, every year, it was, it was healthy maintenance. You were in the windy panhandle, this is true. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. So it was interesting, you did give us one lower cost option as well. Yeah, there was a 27 so, so, Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess his proposal on pricing hasn't changed. Yeah. It's just, I think he updated the dates based on conversations. Maybe you want to talk about your conversation. Yeah, he called me up and asked me about the winter fest. He said he would give me a price on it. I just uh, told him I'd send him stuff. I didn't tell him anything about a budget, how much money we had or anything. Um, but I said, you know, this is going to be very limited. This is a first time festival, et cetera. So I'm sending him stuff and he's going to give me a price okay. on that. But I also, Anissa said, hey, we can get our own projectors and we can ask artists here to do that. We talked about having something. Here and then something that projects so people when they're driving on the highway they can see winter fest. My thoughts on it, yeah, and I, I think in a best case scenario, um, it, will, it would be in December. I think just lighting and stuff and holidays kind of go together better. But then if we like purchase even just one projector or two, you know, we can also use it for for winter fest. Um, I think just December is a little less weather and snow inclusive for okay. events that are going to be walking. The, I'm kind of split on the time of getting winter fest. Um, I do like it as a standalone thing, particularly from a messaging standpoint. Um, you know, fragment taking it into some kind of like lighting fest at the winter fest um, could be a little bit tricky. Do you, think, do you think it's like too much, too much to have in a festival? No, I, if anything, that's what I do like about it. Is um, there, from what we've talked about with winter fest, you know, there may not be a ton that's trend at center, so it does add something, yeah. a, a big thing around here for okay. that time frame. Right? Um, and kind of fill in some program right now. That was my thought to go up. was like maybe we need just a little something extra for winter fest. Being in the first year, we don't have a whole lot going on. Mm -hmm. and and there's, there's a lot of fun things eight. that we could do with the projectors if we had them. Yeah, you know, put yes. on some buildings, different pop-ups <laughs> over here. I mean, there's just kind of like unlimited <laughs> options. Well, I like your idea of doing something at Christmas and promoting that then, and then you know, for Winterfest. Christmas, December, you know, somewhere in there. Yeah. 
yeah, Brett and I had a conversation, and um, you know, there's he would like it to be a standalone event as well, but there is kind of the the luxury of coordinating with the Winter Fest in that that might kick off for this type of deployment, and then it would evolve into a one-time event uh, with some throughout the future years. But I'm I love the technology, and I think it would be tremendous for Trinidad, and I'd like to see it here um, in some way, shape, or form. But beyond that, I don't really care. I'll be able to do I think we were just getting to, it seems like most of us are a fan of it, if I'm reading the room correctly. It would just be budget. Um, this would be the first event I believe we have approved, you know, so, yeah. and some of the rules changed. So we're trying to understand, you know, yeah. how much could we find? Does it sell for one? It could. Um, I mean, I would love to see us work hard to find some sponsors, perhaps. Absolutely. And, and maybe not have the entire burden of it be on the city. I've got, then I've got a whole sponsorship list. Yeah. Prices on it. So, so just waiting for a report now. Yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't feel comfortable yeah. for paying for the whole thing from lodging tax. But if you're going to do a combination, yeah. it's just kind of a question of what. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I Perfect think. opportunity for the dispensaries, you know, because everybody's going to want to go there before they go to the light show. <laughs> 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 so what would the procedure be? Say if we decide we want to move forward, yeah. do we try to get sponsorships first or do we agree to fund some part of it first? What's the procedure? That's a really good question. Um, I mean, I, I think the council's interested in having this um, display yeah. happen at some point. We have to go recommend it to them either way. Sure. It sounds like you all are, by and large, on board at least with the concept. Um, I, I agree. I think ongoing, we could probably purchase our own projectors and come up with some sense of a you know cohesive approach going forward. I, I think there is a benefit, though, to having Brett, who does this as a profession, come in and at least assisting us with the first deployment and being an advisor going forward um, so that we're not just you know kind of willy-nilly putting something out there um, so it's more like he might be a consultant type of thing um, but we could look at his proposal as well maybe we would want to find sponsors but maybe lobbying tax might want to fund some of the money to buy permanent projectors so we have them available they're anywhere between twenty five hundred and five thousand dollars each that's kind of exactly what i was thinking steve yeah i was like i don't I think we want to or could buy all of them, but maybe if we yeah. buy a couple, then he rents less. That costs yeah. goes down. It's kind of a different budget item. Sure. And then we own an asset. So if, if you'd like, what I can do is get with Brent and say, okay, you know, we'd like to own our assets, but um, what would you charge us for a consultant fee to put on a display? Oh, that's and then you'd only be authorizing money, um, or, or we're working with sponsors and partners um, to pay a Brent service fee as a as a professional. They'll still write some supplemental rentals. Probably so. Here. Yeah. The, the scale of it. So just throwing it out there. Yeah. For the first event, yeah. would, would it be reasonable to have him rent for the first event and get a gauge of what it's going to do? Um, what kind of return we're going to get? What kind of draw it's going to have? Um, yeah. I mean, that's a really good question. Invest? Oh, and here's the other thought I had. The last discussion was, could this be folded into the already approved upgrades for space to create in terms of AV? So it's actually two projectors yeah. um, that budget has already been pushed through. There are projectors contemplated in the proposal for space to create. Um, in fact, we had a conversation about laser projectors versus regular LED. Um, but the proposal that came through actually contemplated laser projectors, but they said that was a mistake. Um, so, but it may be an opportunity maybe to split the difference and say, okay, we need projectors for space to create, but why don't we just invest a little bit more money out of the, what you've already authorized um, and get some good laser projectors that we can use for outdoor lighting as well. That'd be awesome. So we can we could explore that option for sure. I'd love to touch base on that okay. separately and okay. as well just kind of have an idea what we're doing, but I don't want to be distracted. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. If you want to come look, um, anybody wants to come look at the proposal that JC is providing me for all the equipment that they're contemplating for space to create, happy to uh, sit down and talk about. Cool. 
Um, so, sounds like on the same page, getting one or two projectors city owns, uh, seeing how that changes the proposal quote. And the other thing that we just need to nail down would be timeline. So whether or not we're doing it with the Winterfest, or if we want to shoot for something that's before New Year's um, in that holiday window. Yeah, what, I guess that would be a good question to answer today as much as we possibly yeah. could, just because December is yes. right around the corner. <laughs> I think that's what I was saying about when you're walking in. So yeah, I think okay. if we're going to do it, we should commit today. Okay. Just because yes. uh, time is of the essence and we don't want to miss the window. Are there any big New Year's things? No. Uh, annual things a year at all? Not annual that I know of. Because yeah. that, that might be a good target. Uh, that's yeah. not a couple of seasons. Uh, you know, New Year's just they break people downtown. <clears throat> When the weather is permitting, I, I just haven't been here. I've been in uh, Cabo, Mexico for the last few years. Well, so. that's what I worry about is people make a lot of travel plans around them. I'd rather hit it in between all the window. Yeah. When there's kind of dead time, kids are off school, people are hanging around the house, or there's something new. Well, um, there's pros and cons. Um, so, Brett and I kind of talked about this a little bit. So, for example, we're going to have a robust holiday. Yeah, so it's the door. So we don't crush anybody. Yeah. Okay. Now, your <laughs> in New Year, What's that? How's your attendance at the well in New Year? Uh, we've only had one, but it, it was good. Okay. Well, we well, have uh, not a lot of New Year's. So, so I guess I mean, ones that like. We'll have all kinds of holiday lighting displays. Um, we're trying to really beef up what we do to make sure that look great for the holidays. Um, so the projector show would compete with that a little bit because we'll have a lot of. Christmas lights, free lit up, that type of thing. It could be the same time as the parade. It could be. Um, about the lighting of the Christmas tree event, um, we could expand that into the first night of the festival as well. So that's an option. That's early December. So that would be the only con I could think of for December is that it might compete with other holiday lighting displays, but maybe that's not a problem. Computer, computer compliment, I guess, how you, how you perceive it. What's that? Oh, it's, it could compete yeah. or complement? Yeah, exactly. It's just exactly. Perception, yeah. I guess. Yeah. That's how it's organized. Yeah, but I guess the question would be if we did it like tied to Winterfest, that's still tied to an event, but it would definitely be a little bit more standout ish. Yeah. Um, but I, again, I, I, think, uh, I think my perception is I think it's good that we embrace this technology and try to do something like this for Trinidad, but uh, I'll let you all talk more about the time. Okay. So what else? What else is Trinidad, like Central Trinidad, for all your folks? Um, there's going to be five ice uh -huh. sculptures. Uh, we're trying to decide on what the subjects will be. Um, five ice sculptures here, and there'll be one at Monument Lake. I've got 12 locations so far. And waiting for work in the county to tell me where they want there to. And they're about uh, 40 inches tall. We're also looking at some events in the Chimina Park or in the whole community for local. A community snow park? Yeah, a community uh, snow park. Uh, so maybe some igloo building, maybe a fire pit where kids could do, or anybody could do um, s'mores. Um, I'm not sure, but maybe what my suggestion is to uh, go out to the golf course and do some sledding. Some what? Sledding. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. 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 We have snow. Yeah, so uh, yeah, yeah, that type of event depends on some. Um, Not too much, but some. I could definitely get it for falling into the lighting. And it could also like lean in so it like sort of run up to where it goes. It's like the last days, whenever most of the things are going on. Because um, it will be running for, I forgot the proposal was like three or four days or something like that. Three or four days. Um, it also gives some nighttime programming for Winterfest itself. Okay, yeah, it does. Um, and it's going to be 2nd through the 4th of February. It's also going to be kind of narrated by Wish Trip because a lot of the focus is going to be between Monument Lake and Lovita. So if you're familiar with travel stories, Wish Trip is kind of the same thing. It gives you location. So it can say, well, if you look on the left, you'll see an ice sculpture of a bear or that's sponsored by a film on Toyota or whatever, right? So, and, and then along uh, Monument Lake, if you look to the right, they're doing an ice fishing demonstration at Monument Lake, and, and then you continue. Uh, Kachara Mountain Park is going to be doing um, 
a two-mile snowshoe race. Uh, we're also going to do a scavenger hunt. Yeah. So that is, that is our intro then as well. What's the grant? Yeah. 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 Anybody who participates in it will go to a location and they pick up a goodie bag. And we're going to do the center, but now it's going to be. We're going to do it. I can't remember what we decided, but they're going to come and get a goodie bag, so they'll turn in all the stuff that they got on on the scavenger hunt. And Wish Trip allows you some social um, interactivity. So if we say one of the items is go to Phil on Ford and look in the glove box of the 2023 Jeep on the show floor and take a picture of you and the little troll or something. Very specific scavenger. So well, it's it's a way to get them into the business, right? So we'll come up with different things. That's right. Go into City Hall and look at Steve Ruger's shoes and tell us what color his shoelaces are. They're orange. <laughs> Is there, since you're here, is there any benefit to the Smithsonian exhibit if we did something in December for a lighting display like this? Well, you know, this takes us out of order here. Yeah. Oh, All right. Um, we'll just stick to what's related to the lighting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 You know, shared ideas and heard his, and so um, you know, he texted me today. So now I know why. Uh, you know, hey, projector is looking good. Yeah, no. So now I know why it is. I got a message from him. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that there are, you know, the Smithsonian is very image heavy, yeah. um, and so projecting them is a no brainer. Mm -hmm. We actually talked about. I've talked to Greg Foley about having gaining access to the roofs on either side of this area so that we could use these walls as projection surfaces. There's power. I mean, at the time, he's like, yeah, put them up there permanently. You know, so, um, yeah, we have always the roof of the theater pretty easy, too. Yeah, like that's been contemplated, too. Um, yeah, so absolutely, there's a way to, to integrate this in. And I've seen Ben McGrath's website, every page of it. Um, he licenses a lot of that content. Um, we would not be using licensed content because we would be using our own. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll work with anybody who raises their hand to be a part of Smithsonian. I think I spoke to you. Would there be a cost associated if they use your content instead of his? No, I mean, our content is the community's content. We it's don't. The exhibit. Well, I think a huge part of the appeal is part that's created for whatever it's being projected on. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know he's pointing from his library, mm -hmm. um, at least to some extent, but yeah. we also talked about local artists or yeah. people creating things for it. And so mm -hmm. that's part of what makes it special. Is, and I'm sure that there's stuff in the Smithsonian Library that would work, um, especially in terms of historical context. but. Um, I do think that's a huge part of what Brett's doing in terms of the place making. Yeah, for sure. And just so you know, we're not using Smithsonian's content. Oh, okay. We're using like State City and uh, like the community's content. Cool. Um, but yeah, I think um, projections, I, mean, I need four of them for those cubbies. So, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, get as many of them as you want. Okay. As long as I can use them December through January. When would you start using that? Uh, opening night, December 9th. Okay. So the wedding festival will happen before December 9th. Yeah. <laughs> December. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a short time on it. Right. Um, you definitely can get your hands on the projectors, for sure. Yeah. But that is a concern. I mean, what you spoke to is just time frame in terms of pulling together a lighting festival and, uh, and promoting it. So if this went to, if we changed it to be an event with the Smithsonian, what I'm hearing is we would purchase the projectors, so we would use community assets, 
So then the proposal would change from what Greg has given us to be just like a consultant. Would he then just be a consultant for that? Yeah, I think he would kind of be the, the professional expert to come help us administer the, the display. <laughs> I mean, not to change the cost. Yeah, that he's. What about proposing? and just throwing this out here? Why don't we could look at maybe Brett's proposal for Winterfest? But that doesn't mean we can't still get some projectors in right. and do some displays in December, and even do a mini type of show downtown that kicks off Smithsonian or works with Smithsonian. Um, what do you all think of something like that? Because uh, I love that you said that. Both. That's exactly. I mean, I'm sorry, but yeah. yeah. Why not? Why not both? Why not have our own assets? Yeah. We can use however we want, yeah. and then he can come in with his. For, I mean, maybe. Well. Yeah. And I, I would love to, just an example. We had. Um, who's down here? Uh, <coughs> the. Um, uh, our friend, some of our friends from Fort Carson were here today for a meeting, um, and then the AG's office is coming tomorrow, and both groups had a hard time finding this facility, oddly enough. They were at the uh, front door of the art space lobbies. Um, and so signage is something that I think we need to think about for this building. But as far as projectors go, I just think we have this tremendous opportunity with these two white walls out here to bring some attention to the space. Um, so if we did purchase permanent projectors, I'd love to see some deployments for out there as well. I think that would be a huge benefit to increasing lodging taxes, because yeah. we have a lot of day traffic. People stop by during the day, but yeah. if they have around Trinidad or night around Main Street, it's usually pretty quiet. But yeah. if we could pull people off the highway to come and see that, yeah. Yeah. a few more will come and stay as, as well. So it could be a good evening attraction. What would you think, Jason? Would be like we could have projectors out here, and then it'd be like shows, like kind of the Las Vegas Mountains. And yeah, it's just a kind of another way to bring people into yeah. town, you know, because people come during the day for a variety of reasons, but yeah. at, at night it's it's just a lot quieter. So I think it could make more night traffic, and then maybe feel like, like oh, this is a cute town. Let's stay tonight. So let's separate the two. Let's pick the J the item on the next agenda to discuss the purchase of projectors for the Spirit Space Three. And then we'll move forward with this agenda item, lighting festival. Um, I'm hearing that maybe we're leaning towards doing it um, with winter fest. Yeah. And also, just, yeah, I think it's better to have a little more time built in. Because it's time to get some sponsors, too. Assuming that's right, it's also available. And then yes, I've talked with him. He's, he's aiming towards that as we speak, so. Okay. So on the uh, Lion Festival, uh, do we want to move forward and make a motion to uh, recommend the Lion Festival for Winter Fest? I'm comfortable with that. I would put a caveat in the motion with um, an attempt to find sponsors to offset the cost. Yeah. No. Oh, can we, work can we do half and then find sponsors for the other half? I would say let's see how much we can get a sponsor in the period. Okay. So, so it's sponsors for the last one. Okay, and actually, I have a list of like 61 different potential sponsors. Cool. So we can add that. So I would entertain a motion to recommend that we move forward with the Lighting Festival. Um, Try to get funding from sponsorships and then fund whatever we can't get. I'll make that motion. Second. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring the I'll bring the sponsorship, the sponsorship form next time because I already like this is what you get for this prize, this is what you get for this prize, just so y'all can look at it. So we have a motion on the floor. All in favor? Aye. Uh, what's that? Yes, you do. <laughs> Anybody opposed? No. Okay. Um, secondly, I would motion that we recommend acquiring two city owned projectors. I don't know if we should include that as a part of the space to create the existing space to create uh, expenditures or not. 
I will put a disc card yeah. for that too, just so we just we already have that money reserved. Let's just put a disc card for that. Cool. Yeah. So, do we need to recommend that then? I mean, no. it's already out there. No, we'll just take that as direction. So, I'll go cool. with Jason. Right on. Um, and then, yeah, ideally, those are required in time for Smithsonian. And, yeah, AMs yeah, right. can be used in conjunction with holiday money. To, yeah. you know, you could project all kinds of what's there? Uh, <laughs> Christmas, well, not Christmas, 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 it was, it was nice. I liked it. I didn't get to stay the last day where they had come back for the steering committee for the Trinidad's Blue um, But I was able to go to the Visitor Services Summit, which I believe uh, the manager of our Visitor Center was there. Um, I did not actually meet him. We did not cross paths. I crossed paths with Jared and with Keely, but not with Glenn. Jeff. 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 Oh, Jeff. 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 Yes, Jeff was there. Um, I was able to attend the Visitor Summit, the Visitor Center Summit. Um, they came up with some good things. Uh, they did a frontline worker training in Breckenridge called Break 101. Um, it's experience driven, so the workers get to try the activity calendar. So they, they uh, make up. So say we have something to do in Trinidad the Trails, and we decide, okay, for the workers, we're going to have like a little activity where we get several frontline workers from Trinidad to go experience the trails, or to go experience agritourism, or to have an experience in town that they then could recommend to visitors, uh, just so they have more knowledge about what's actually happening in there. Um, they have outings, they do trivia nights, retail scavenger nights, all kinds of stuff. Um, one of the things that I really liked from the Visitor uh, Summit, Center Summit was a lot of the Visitor Center in Colorado have a mobile visitor center that do some kind of mobile visitor center. So, for example, if they have a festival where there's booths on Main Street, then the Visitor Center would have an actual booth at that oh, booth. Yes. Um, which gives them some exposure um, and all that good stuff, which I thought that was great. Uh, some of them have a, one of them has an old Volkswagen van, the van that they drive around. It looks pretty cool. Um, and they get to park it at like the state parks um, and do all kinds of stuff um, out there to get people out and about. Um, the, the travel shop, is that ours? Um, the one at the visitor at the welcome center? The one at the commercial. No, that is not ours. Um, they have local art in their visitor centers. Um, the lovely visitor center has an attraction where they put locks on the back of the sign that says love. That was pretty cool. Um, I did I attended some stuff about destination stewardship. Um, they have a lot of information. Um, this Colorado Tourism Office is a great resource, and we should be looking to use them as much as possible. Um, there is, uh, if you look at Destination Stewardship, they have case studies that I think are beneficial for us. For example, um, I don't have the county written down, but some county somewhere is having a huge problem with human feces on the trails. And so they did a campaign, and it has worked. What's the campaign slogan? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great point. I don't know, but that was, I was like, oh, that's a horrible problem. <laughs> uh, but they put, like, restrooms in their trailheads and, you know, signs and stuff, and just did a lot of uh, education. Um, let's see. A lot of stuff about frameworks and stuff, um, community engagement, um, so most residents do not feel included and they give some priorities. Um, I think in community engagement is very important. 
I think it's having a A lot of people, I think I met every marketing firm that has ever worked with the Colorado Tourism Office. They tell me I'm not thinking I do, and I've got a stack of cards. Okay. <laughs> so as soon as we do that, we can, I'll start, I'll send him a call, and I'll throw my email and call. Cool. So I do plan on doing that. They have, so a couple of them have experience in this area. Cool. They've done work for where for them, for Alamosa. Um, one guy was even from Pueblo, so he had to come and be some kind of training all the time. Um, so there, some of them are actually experienced in this area, um, but they've done a lot of work with the Colorado Children's Office on them, so I think that would be a good place to go. And that's pretty much it. Jason, you were there too, all right. I was there, but I didn't have a pass, so well, if you really had a pass, but I didn't, as funny as that was. You just got your joy for a con, right? I did, I've never really been, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So okay. she have a free place to stay. So, did I yeah. give you any insight or anything that you wanted to share? Oh, Jesus. Sorry, I'm sure you're on the spot. Um, okay. Yeah, she, she definitely enjoyed it um, with some people, I think, uh, involved in Destination Blueprint. Um, yeah, I don't really have much to say. Okay. So, okay. no 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 prepared on that. Um, I will get back with her and see if there's anything. I'm sure. I don't think she was going to write a report or something. Yeah, yeah that'd be terrific. Okay, sounds good. Any questions? All right, then I'm going to end the meeting. Next item on the agenda Colorado National Park Rips Advertising. This is the one that uh, we kind of we saw the presentation on last time, or is that on the screen? When it, yeah, and then Jason asked for additional information. I believe we received that information. I did. Thank you for providing that, Marty. Uh, that was very helpful. Um, I looked into it, and yeah, uh, it was great that the statistics they provided was good. I looked into this website pretty well. Um, overall, I think it's okay. It's it's some of the better um, digital print slash media um, type that we've had. Um, how, the, the biggest issue that I saw, so we got, we're getting leads from it, which is fantastic, and there's 1,800, but we are getting leads when someone is requesting information about the Great Sand Dunes, mm -hmm. and then they're giving them to us, and honestly, that's kind of borderline illegal. Um, so us following up with them, and they request information about sand dunes, if they filed a complaint, it's not very likely, but it's still, yeah. wow. it's, it's, a, it's a little dicey. I wouldn't it's worry really about it too much, but... Program. That was my initial was, concern was that they're giving us leads that are from even their general database where they might have either clicked on something but they didn't say, hey, I want updates on Trinidad. Um, wow. So, I mean, this is, it's a gray area specifically. I have done a program like this in my professional world uh, where um, it's still technically an opt in and the fine print says you may share your info with third party partners. Yeah. So like if legally it's it. covered. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the, the real issue is the quality of the lead. As a, I think as opposed to the legality, like turning that money in hot it's water. An hour and and half away. Away. Yeah, I wouldn't be worried about the legality. Um, yeah, but sure. they might get an email from Trinidad and say, who the hell is this? Um, so <laughs> whether or not that's a huge yeah. problem, it's up for debate. Yeah. Um, it's more just uh, the quality of these themselves. Okay. Yeah, and I would just say overall, you know, we already um, voted on, you know, canceling all marketing right now. We wanted to yeah. get our marketing agency on and regroup, yeah. and this is six thousand dollars, and I don't think it's it's worth it personally. Okay. And also, um, we don't have the ability to really follow up with them. You know, right now, I think we were mailing stuff out to people for a while, which is pretty expensive and um, effective and I think there was an email um, you know campaign that was going out and in a perfect world the way it worked we get an email and they would just automatically get an email from us you know you fill out a form you get information about Trinidad yeah. uh, but we just don't have the capability of that right now maybe when we have a marketing firm again so uh, my thoughts since we've already you know voted to veto all marketing I think we should stick with that for now and 
um, not get distracted with new. We're going to get lots and lots of these opportunities that, that come up. People are going to reach out to us and about um, you know new, new programs, new places to, to advertise. Um, but I think we should get the marketing from on, use their expertise and, and stuff, um, and continue on. You know, kind of the plan that we made when we had a retreat. Follow our demographics. You know the places we want to draw people here from, and then kind of expand out. So that's that's my thoughts on it. But I think we should veto it as we did before. We also have our um, strategic plan that we're starting, and then our community survey as well, um, which we'll touch on quality of life indicators. And I know that's more focused on our residents, but there may be some things that come out of that that might help inform decisions that we make going forward on these types of initiatives. Definitely. Oh, we're next? Okay. Uh, well, we're doing the marketing RFP model that I do. Colorado National Park is advertising. We're just guessing that. Oh, oh, you're right. Okay, I thought you were going to be No, no, I was just wondering if you had an opinion. No, no, not no, really. I, I still think that trend advertising is appropriate in some places, but I agree that we should be, if we're getting these leads, we should be sending out an email that has a link to our website and all that kind of stuff because that's how. I don't have a particular tie or thought about this particular advertising, but I do want us to look at everything that comes up, even even though previous to my arriving, you know, I said not to look at any of those. I think we might miss some opportunities if we don't at least look at them all, even with the firm coming on. Um, some of that money was budgeted previously to this board and, uh, and you know, at this point uh, obviously some of it's going to be running into the next budget here but um, I don't have strong feelings about this one. I would have, uh, I would have to know more and I'll trust you as well. Yeah, the and the info went out the email as well. Um, That's the one that um, I put on the list of things Pretty dead as well. Um, we weren't getting any SEO value. Like, if someone Google Trinidad, nothing was showing up from there. Well, most of it was in there sending out email blasts. You kind of see spikes. See the spikes out. You know, which is it's it's something. You know, it, it counts if it was SEO. I would have more value. But what are the spikes? Know. Is that people opening the emails? Uh, it, it is. Like it means they're, they're sending their, their own traffic there. Um, yeah. So it's it's certain it's certainly something. Okay. That was. They were searching on Google and they were ranking number one for us. That would be great. Um, yeah. But um, I guess one concern for me is spending time on talking about each one of these. I think it's appropriate to maybe have them in a folder and then be notified and we can look at it and then decide to talk about it. Like our last meeting was two and a half hours. The other two were two. There's, and we kind of miss some of the important stuff last meeting. So it was two and a half hours because we had the lighting presentation. Yeah. But, you know, it's still totally, they're, they're, they're just getting long, so maybe if we just have a way Do you want to our marketing and advertising, uh, advertising consultant to be looking for these opportunities and make uh, recommendations? If they are recommended, then yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, we could put that into the scope. And then it is part of the RFP. It is, okay. yeah, we got together yesterday okay. and, and finished that, so yes. we'll kind of lead into okay. that. But I'm not sure if we need to vote on it again, but I would make a motion to uh, veto this again. I'm not sure if we need to make that. I don't think you need to. Okay. Um, if there was an affirmative motion to move forward, I think we would want that, but okay. otherwise we'll consider it as the board has not uh, decided to move forward on this initiative. And we can always revisit that with a practical question. Before. We can, we can revisit everything. Um, I kind of felt like we were on a, a pause, and I want to stay focused. We're going to have a lot coming up with this RFP. Cool. And I think just waiting a little bit longer, and, and we can regroup. Okay. Um, the only thing I will throw out there is just um, during this lull, you know, do we have enough irons in the fire in the meantime, right? I mean, we're trying to get the digital campaign going as a stopgap, um, and we haven't really been able to get the access we need from the city to actually perform those things. Okay. Um, so in the meantime, there may or may not be a lot of promotion on there. Um, so it's at least worth keeping in mind that we should have, we should have a program of some type. I was going to ask about that program too when it came out there. 
One thing I was able to get done uh, with Anissa is we have Google Analytics on our site. That's awesome. Should have had that from the start, uh, but we have it now, so it's great. Um, so we can Google Analytics. So uh, basically, it can tell you on the website where people come from, how many people. Um, okay. And one of the things I saw is so referral traffic. Let's say we on, on a website like this, they have a link that points to our site. We can see how many visits we're getting. And from you know any digital advertising thing, we're we're getting like zero. I've only had it about forty five days, but we're not getting clicks from that. That's not the only thing that we want from that. Um, awareness is, is something too, but we're not getting any, any clicks. Okay. And that maybe we'll see some of that come up. Um, but maybe the only place that's really we're getting referral traffic from is like City of Trend Map website. How much for the most part? Data are you, are you looking at like two months from now? Because yeah. it hasn't. I, I would say about forty-five days. I can. Yeah. Let's see. Hey Tom, I'm sorry to put you on the spot. Would you post a YouTube video? Are there analytics as to who's watching it and from where? I there is, but I don't really look. I look at it occasionally. Yeah. But I, I do have analytics. Okay. Just curious. Let's see. Then. Sunday, September seventeenth is when it starts. So I don't even have a month yet. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's mostly Trinidad people. You were <laughs> <laughs> you can see the most popular pages, place to stay pages. Um, I could send out access for everyone. Okay. Maybe even create just a spreadsheet inside our SharePoint for this type of information so we can all go in. And I'm happy to pr present it another day and show oh, yeah, them what we have, how, how it works, just so we don't get too distracted. But yeah. you know, when I stay after, I can show anyone wants to show. But it's, cool. We have it, and that's the most important piece of data that we can have okay. that's awesome. to start. So, so that's a good thing. Is there, um, Anissa's not here, but are, are you guys having any problems coordinating with her other than apparently access? Um, so yeah, I've, I've heard just a couple of different things and I know some of them are um, yeah. city, law, credit card, me sure. not having yeah. stuff, which is fine. I yeah. want nothing to do with that in any way. <laughs> um, and I've heard then I couldn't have access and then I, I can and I'm a little confused. I definitely need to regroup with Anissa and I know, um, yeah. She probably should have tried last week because she's like, give me some time with the wrap. I'm working on it. This <laughs> I'm gonna get it. But the, the credit card's in, so it's never, you know, in your possession. Nobody wants that. I don't want that. I just need it good to go. And I basically sent um, requesting access. Okay. And if we just approve it, that'll probably give me most of what I need. Why don't um, you, me, and Anissa get together and go if you want? I wrote my one, yeah. I'll yeah, have to send her a couple emails and I haven't heard anything. Okay, so let's all get together soon. I'll, I'll get with her and we're going to meet her. Yeah, that would be great. I think we could iron out a lot of it yeah. quickly. I mean, I mean, if we are able to have access to the website or not, um, she's given me access to the new website she was working on. That looks okay. great. Um, okay. I haven't really touched anything, but um, we and Joe will need to get a few more of these type of scripts that, um, that, that attract data yeah. and information and stuff. So, yeah. okay. so you know how we're doing. Yeah, we're here. Thank you. So sure. on the <laughs> never <laughs> race, never race. Um, so the Colorado National Park for advertising. Um, what's the final say on that guy who put that to the side? Is that going to go yeah. forward? Sounds like we're putting it to the side. I'm definitely fine keeping things paused, um, especially if we can start getting some traction and have some other things out there. Um, but yeah, waiting on the, the marketing for more recommendations to those types of programs. We can always restart, and one more thought is we should be negotiating with every single um, platform like this. It's, it's not an end all be all price. We can negotiate it, we can negotiate it down a bit. Absolutely. And we should try that with every <laughs> single person. That. You cannot negotiate with, with Google, but you can negotiate with platforms like this. Anything else on this particular subject? Oh, let's move on to the marketing RFP final edits and issues. So, everybody have a copy. Thanks for bringing those. So, Joe, I marked a couple of places on mm -hmm. here in green. I changed the address. Um, we had 205 or 204 on there. It actually should be 210. <coughs> so, I changed that. Um, there was another area, um, Steve had mentioned not um, 
Yeah, that was the one. Total amount that was the thing rate. I wanted to discuss today. Yeah, so, and then the other one was the date uh, for issuance of publication. You had September 16th? Uh, meant to be October. Yeah. October? Mm -hmm. Good catch. Yeah, we mostly were looking uh, to do as fast as possible on the timeline. Um, so that's um, around, a, it's a month to submit, which I think is adequate time. Um, and then we have enough time to get an announcement out before the holidays hit. So two weeks ahead of Christmas, I think most people will still be in office. Yeah, no, that's the only thing I saw was we had September instead of Yeah, I did catch on that, thank you. Um, so then I just changed the address, those were the only things I caught. And then discussing actually putting a, a number in there mm -hmm. for the marketing budget. Those are the only things that I saw. I, uh, I think one question we also had is, um, it, said, it says in here on number three, um, six copies of the proposal must be presented. Um, I, I guess, do we need that? Is that any kind of rule or is that just a preference? It is, it's, it's, it's a lot, some of these might be 50, 75 pages and it's just a lot of paper. So. Yeah, they're not going to be that long. And usually, what they do is they put um, it's it's a, a spiral bound proposal is what they usually present. It's like what I showed you last week. Mm -hmm. That should have been it. So it's not a big deal, and it just gives everybody a copy. Yeah, it's just going to copy. Okay. Much. Um, I'm okay getting the physical ones. Um, so yeah, we were just thinking about that language. We were curious if there was a like city rule around receiving them or not. Um, you know, we did update it to say, um, I love it was here or elsewhere that it should that they should also provide a PDF copy as well. Um, it was in here. It said no fax, email, or telephone proposals. Oh, that's why it's not. The ordinance says competitive sealed proposals. Yeah. Um, we're working to change our ordinance right now on, and redo our entire procurement code. Uh, but for now, we construe competitive sealed proposals as have to be physical copies. Okay, so now digital is allowed. Right. But um, I think it's fair to request that they provide like a thumb drive of a PDF and they do. the proposal. They almost always do yeah. whenever they send their packets and they always have a thumb drive attached. So we should uh, put that specifically as a request. I will put that in the uh, It's yeah. much easier to circulate and we can have like and search and look at it later whenever you have yep. something else. I don't want to overburden you, but can you make these changes now? Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> I will make them immediately after this meeting. Um, <laughs> no one else is looking at the live doc anyway. So. <laughs> um, Marty, do you have them to edit? Do you know where you edited this? Was it on, on your local drive? I think it was. Yeah. I did, just so you know, when we have living docs like this, let's do it out of the SharePoint. Um, so I did put this in there. There's a marketing RFP folder. Right. Uh, that way we can all get whatever's up to Yeah, I didn't want to make changes for that point. Oh, sure. That final. Yeah. I was just want. I just made copies so that cool. you would see the changes, and then you can go in there and make the changes yourself. I, I just didn't want. To, so I didn't want to answer this. Yeah, yeah. Let me know. Cool. Um, I will definitely get those updated. Okay, so the we got the date there. The we'll get a thumb drive copy. The address on the card and the last page. Yep. <laughs> I think that's why we put Monday, just in case we have any other changes to do. And then I think our next question is, how do we get out there? What, what, what we need so to first do we have to do publication. Oh. So do, do we have to publish? Question, do we have to recommend this to Council and have them approve it? They've already approved it. Yeah, all good. Yeah, you're good. All right. Um, so just, there has to be a quick publication notice. So I usually send that to the client or the <coughs> journal. Um, and that is a requirement, it has to be a publication. Mm -hmm. So you send me the file. So it's just like a classified? So and no, it's actually a public notice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It is. Yeah, so yeah. it's like yeah. the liquor licenses and stuff. It's similar to classified, but it's in the legal section, so it's with like obituary, public notices, and sale notices, that type of thing. And the, uh, the actual RFP isn't there. It's, it's drafted so it's smaller, so we're not you know, publication, we don't have to do the whole thing. So it just has minimal points to it. And I can take that from the language of the RFP. And it is appropriate, by the way, for us to send a 
copies of the RFP directly to vendors yes. that you would like to respond. So if there's anyone particularly you all would like us to send a direct copy to you <coughs> as well, but we do have to meet the legal publication requirements on here. Can I email? Personally, so yeah, we, okay. we send it yeah. to everyone who proposed before, so we're totally fair. Yeah, and transparent. Absolutely. Absolutely. And she and anyone that, yeah, that Ashley had as well from the conference. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good, good proposal because it's, uh, there's, there's no harm in having more of it. Yeah. Right. And we also, Joe did an awesome job of writing down all of our, our target demographics, the people, the places where they are, you know, what they do, and we want to send that to all of them as well. Okay. I would put that as an appendix to the actual RP. It's okay. Sure, I can tag it on at the end. Yeah. Um, one uh, rewind real quick. We were talking about the the dollar amounts. Um, so, working off the previous RP that was issued that had sixty k, and then you said that you returned and updated to hundred. Uh, but we had discussed leaving it out. Yeah, let's so not with the price of what our budget is, please, in the in the RP. So just strike the total marketing budget entirely. Yeah. They may ask us, and we'll just say, hey, we're looking for you to tell us what it would cost to perform this scope of work. And that's what makes it more competitive. If you can tell them, we have $175,000 in the budget. Yeah, for that example. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'll just exactly. write it there. Yeah, please. Here, here's one question that we were curious about. So typically, these type of things in the general work on lots of it's a monthly retainer type thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Is that possible, or, or is this? We're going to pay them up front, or we wouldn't pay up front. So we would pay for services rendered, um, and what I would uh, expect would be them for them to put a fee proposal together, which would probably have an hourly rate type of thing, and we would just pay them based on the work and not to exceed figure ultimately. But we can negotiate all that when we execute the contract. Oh, yeah. Um, and so it seems like when responses came in, or reviewed them. Um, do you ever go back with the follow-up so you would like select three finalists, allow them like a Q&A or an oral or to come meet with us directly? Absolutely, that's very common in our RFP processes. Um, for most of our public works engineering RFPs, we'll interview the top two or three. So if you all want to move forward with interviews, that would be... Yeah, I guess well, that's probably we Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be, but you might want to listen to we have it in here. The timeline is probably more for us than, yeah. than anyone, but yeah. we might as well let yeah. everyone know. So yeah, I guess I should know specifically. They can always just ask. We them. also just kind of, this is what that part was there before, yeah. and we just kind of updated yeah. the dates to hit this year. It was almost the same time last year. Oh, is it their interviews and their evaluation process? Is that what we were going to say? Yeah. 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 And that's perfect. We yeah. want to score the interviews as well. So when they come in an interview, we'll have a score matrix for how each one looks. We went through it and we tried to have dates right before we had a meeting and things like that, but we'll probably have to call some special yeah. meetings on a few of these things. And we will publish those just, just, that, that just so you all know the uh, Chronicle has different, they, they're gone, they're gone once weekly now. Mm -hmm. So that really tightens the timeline for us getting legal publications on. Um, but we will, I mean, I think we'll be good to issue this here very soon. And then once we know the date we want to issue it, we'll backtrack and uh, formulate the timeline based on that. I was hoping we so do this. Uh, what, the 16th is what date? It's Monday. It's Monday. Monday. Yes, so we're probably going to publish it until Friday. Friday of next week. Yeah. Friday of next week. That's yeah. because <coughs> the newspaper, right? Right. You have okay. a copy of this. What's up? You have a copy of the copy for it. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so we do have that okay. timeline in here. Okay. So if we want to adjust that, I'll make those as part of the notes. Okay, let's just do it all now so we can get it out. So I would say issuance of RP would be October 23rd. Yeah. No. And <laughs> uh, you can adjust all the other dates based on that. With, with, with the situation, the, the rule about having to put it in a, a publication and the way that's going away. I uh, recall the council talking about that. Is there discussion on or finding out other ways to publicize it? The Press Association has a very strong lobby in this state, um, so I don't know that we're going to be able to ever get away from 
requirements of print. Um, it's state law as well that we have to mirror. So unfortunately, no. Um, so we still have to do that. I don't see that changing anytime soon, Chris. Because it, it's becoming harder and harder for this, especially communities this size. Yes. Eventually, I think it might change. So state Friday is the 20th. We're, okay, we want to, yeah, let's issue it that day. I was thinking that one. Yeah, that's fine. And then they moved everything up and made this like, just a couple days before, so there's not a whole week. They do the really good. Yeah, they really need a week to decide. Yes, that is a question for Steve. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I would give yourselves a week. I mean, well, if you get seven proposals. No, no, between um, um, selection and announcement. Oh. I mean, um, that could be immediate. If we've already know. selected them, is there a reason we need to wait a week to No, I mean, we can announce, um, I think, what would be contemplated at that time would be contract negotiations, but as the day you select someone is the day we can notify uh, whoever the winner is and then everybody else. Yeah, if we did that, we could keep our final end date. Yeah. And yeah, just, exactly. with yeah. Christmas coming up, and this would be a goal to have them start January yeah. 1st, so yeah. it kind of works out well. Yeah, well, I might just start There's a good bit of holidays in there. Strike preliminary selection period, then have yeah. interviews and then announce. Yeah, I would just take that out altogether and oh. put an announcement of final selection. And then we basically keep the rest sure. outside of the deadline will be pushed to the 20th. Yeah. Okay. Great. Awesome. Um, is everyone comfortable with? rest of the RFP as it stands. Uh, so I will make those changes, get them to Marty and Steve, and let them do the magic. Uh, do we need to see um, an update on one before we take a vote? <coughs> you can motion to accept with changes. As amended. I can't motion. Okay. <laughs> uh, motion to approve marketing RFP with Joe's changes. Second. I mean, all in favor? Aye. You can put a loose. No? All right. Motion moves forward. With Joe's changes. With Joe's changes. With Joe Martin. Awesome. So, last thing in the old business destination reprint. Um, yes. I'm representing the team here for destination reprint. We had our first meeting. A little over a month ago, so I had to pull up my notes because I forget. You're going to forget a lot more the more years that go by. Okay. Anyway, what um, was that? Hmm? What was that? No, age. <laughs> I was making a comment about age. I know, and I'm joking about for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, there began the guide conversations around tourism in Trinidad. They brought up uh, four areas, or three areas to align tourism priorities that will help us create two to three priorities and create an action plan around each. Their product development includes, I loved when they went through this because um, we talked about the different things that were each under these headers that maybe we don't have all of our arms around to understand what assets that we already have that fulfill some of these um, ideas or their products. Outdoor recreation is one. So underneath that, there are trails, and we already have the Purgatory River Vision, the river walk enhancement, and the gondola system, the whole Jetsons thing, uh, for Fisher's Peak State Park to Trinidad Lake State Park, winter recreation, which we, you know, we have the lighting thing, but also Winterfest coming up, and the Old Silver's Trail, Simpsons Rest, activities around that. Next, events and festivals, the headings underneath that are arts and culture, and history, and under history we have everything. We've got the Ludlow area, we've got the Western Heritage, Fat Masterson, which I put next to that, uh, the Santa Fe Trail Days, uh, Santa Fe Interpretive Center, Good Night Exploration Tours, Education Programs, and Digital Storytelling, which we're utilizing for uh, Winterfest with Wish Trip, Wish Trip app, and there's travel stories also in the area, and then winter experiences. So the three headers were outdoor recreation, festivals and events, and winter experiences. Uh, they uh, in store for us is destination assessments. They're going to do background research at core team meetings. Our next one is next uh, week on the 17th. Uh, visitor profile studies. They want to do a visitor sentiment study. So I don't know if that's anything that we can dovetail into some of the uh, surveys we're already doing. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. 
uh, and then tourism stakeholder study, on which they also do the CDR and Associates. So I would imagine it would be some of the same players in that. Um, and we need to, next week we're going to talk about giving them a list of stakeholders. Uh, and then stakeholder interviews. They want to do stakeholder interviews. What do you think about tourism? What do you think is needed? Um, and then the full day workshop will be December the 5th. That's a community meeting, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, and then they give us 100 hours of free consulting. So, and as I said, the next meeting is next Monday. And I did print out some slides for you, but I don't want to have some more. So. Okay. Um, so, the stakeholders are next week? Uh-huh. We're going to talk about that list next week. I figure it's just going to be the same list as CER, and I think they're already finding some. Yeah, they're already, they're already looking at the stakeholders. Yeah. So it's not like we have to come in with a list. Okay. They're going to give us a list and we'll go, oh, you forgot so-and-so, you forgot so-and-so. Okay. I'd like to be on the list. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, the entire lobby dashboard is on that. Yes. Okay, good. That's what I was going to say. So, stakeholders, this means like businesses. Stakeholders would be businesses, it would be museums, it would be arts, it would be, I mean, all the diverse <laughs> industries. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, so okay. the entire lobby dashboard, and then, okay, that's good. Yeah, hotels. It's, I mean, it yeah. means that hotels be on the emails or anything. Um, Can I have a list of every manager oh, that you can't add for campus? Can't oh, well. Under, well, I can include cannabis. You can't. You can't include cannabis because this is a Colorado Tourism Office or um, event or program. We have to exclude cannabis because it's government. Okay. It's state. It's state so going to run. Well, cannabis is legal in the state. <laughs> I know. It's not my call, honey. Yeah. It's not like you're trying to deposit it in a bank. No. Yeah, please do. Yeah, yeah. 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 do. There's a board. Yeah. 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 It's exactly what it is. It's just it's like the slider, right? We're yeah. down here at the local level. And yeah. yeah. Well, it's a point of us at the city. Why don't you agree with the realtors have a clause in there about having it? They're reading property, even though it's legal in the state, they're afraid that yeah. when yeah, the we can't carry real estate information at the Welcome Center yeah. or cannabis information at the Welcome Center because it's government agreement. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe federal funding? Yeah, yeah. it's partially federal So the state, just like us, they have to maintain a drug free workplace to be eligible for federal funding. So if so we have to drug test our employees for really? marijuana, yeah. uh, um, and so does the state. And yeah, we would be, uh, it's so sad, we would be jeopardizing, honestly, millions of dollars worth of federal money if we didn't comply with federal law. Yeah. This is just a now, you know, they find something, just go. We put a lot of bed in bed. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Thanks for the update. Yes. Yeah. Any questions for Amanda on that? Okay. Welcome to launch a new business. Voter guide information. Yeah. That I, I can talk about that. It's published. It's good to go. It, it went out today. It's on our website and all of our social media. Um, thank you all for some of you who have been um, you know, championing the lodging wow. tax increase. I did see a comment from a resident. Um, concerned about the disbandment of the previous tourism board um, saying that it was a 501c3 um, and wondering where the money went. It's not a 501c3. Yeah, it's just talking about a no. structure under the organization. Is it the not no. no, it's Nancy. Oh. She would like her patio back if you were not aware. You'll get it at some point. Wow. Wow. Uh, she clearly is uh, completely uh, misinformed on how this all works. Yeah, I'm, I'm working with Anissa. We're going to put a rebuttal out to her comment because yeah. I don't want people to misinterpret that, first of all, none of the money has gone anywhere. It's still sitting safely in our coffers. And secondly, we are not a 501c3. I do want to put this out there. Someone did say that to me. I yeah. can't remember who it was. Where did all the money go? I'm like, it's in the bank. Yeah, we have a bank. large portion that right. we need to spin down. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. yeah. um, that's also a uh, that's also a 
you know, a failure of, I'm not gonna, I'm just sitting here and point fingers, but a failure of that board and that council to not have spent that money, if that's the concern. Sure, so, sure. Yes, sir. I've heard that concern from a lot of people, and anyone I've talked to that is currently opposed to this, yeah. that is their reason. Yeah. yeah, but that's also, I feel like that's an answer to any, that's like the common refrain for tax increases, like, yeah. well, they're just going to waste it anyway, or like, okay. kind of projects. Or Everyone whatever. I've talked to is like, well, they haven't spent any of it. And I get that. I mean, we've only had this new structure for a few months now, and under the previous structure, all of that money would have had have to have been spent under marketing and advertising our community. Which, that, that's which my really, goal. in my opinion, would have been very wasteful of, uh, of hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. of money. So, I mean, yeah. so my, my question was going to be on um, where we were on the 130K for all this stuff yeah. because I saw it as an opportunity to show yeah. we're buying, investing in the community with this. It's Am I allowed to share that? Yeah, actually. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's fully. A lot of people are hearing about it and excited, and I just want yeah, to, yeah. you know, quadruple confirm that I guess, you know, we're, we're doing it and that I can 100%. talk about it. Authorized by you all and the council. We're good. <coughs> so we just have to buy it, basically? Yeah. What's the thing? Was the order. Order. Okay. Sorry, yeah, we're we are off. We are way off subject. We do have a miscellaneous section that we can read this. It's just okay. free question, Chris, if you don't mind holding on to that. Voter guide and yeah. uh, voter guide yeah. yeah. information. We can move past it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's go to Sorry. Mr. Chapman. Smithsonian, you can see what you got. Thanks for waiting patiently. Okay, you know, this, is, this is really helpful because. Um, one, I'm just glad to be able to share what we have going on the Smithsonian, but. It, you know, getting to see how it is that this board works and, and hear what else is going on um, is really helpful. So, um, you know, start at the top, Smithsonian proper is going to be here opening December 9th, uh, right back where Goodnight Moon and everything else is right now. Uh, we have the Smithsonian exhibit, which is about 800 square feet, comes in 16 travel cases with instructions and you do what you're told. Uh, we have that through January 13th, and uh, we have a couple of requirements. Uh, well, one is that uh, we host a handful, three, uh, conversations in the community. I think we're at six or seven right now. Um, <clears throat> and they encourage us to create a companion exhibit. So right now, um, we're going to be somewhere between 24 and 30 events uh, over a six-week period, uh, starting December 1st through, uh, through mid-January. They're happening all over town. We've got a couple of exhibits opening up at the Mitch, and at Skateland, maybe the Freemasons. They're kind of something to pin down, but, um, but we're also having a lot of uh, facilitating a lot of conversations that are going to be really important uh, for our community in a number of different ways. Um, a couple of which I just shared with you today. Uh, the Smithsonian, it's history, right? So um, we're exploring the history of this region over the past hundred years through whatever lens we want. And um, our broad category is agriculture, uh, in part because it touches so many aspects of so many lives, whether you're raising something, growing something, or making something, and um, which is actually the name of one of the exhibits that's in there is Grow, Race, Make. Um, and um, we've got matriarch and patriarch, so we're really going back into our history and uh, not just doing the honor our elders thing, but we're gonna be learning from them in real time. Uh, through these panel discussions, um, train museum, there's a, just a lot going on. Uh, and all of it we're having to make, because none of these things exist. Um, so we've got right now, the reason that I'm here is I'm just going to appeal for some funds. Uh, aim is to keep all of this under 50 grand. Right now we're at 47. And uh, we've raised. 11, we've got grants out, you know, for probably 20 right now, and we'll be doing uh, ad sales, for, and this is something that I want to make sure that you let me know what's going on, is that we're producing 10,000 copies of a festival guide, 
that will be a live document for six weeks, uh, letting everybody know what's happening when, where, maps. Uh, but if there's anything that's going on in the community during that time period, let me know because that's the kind of stuff that we can include in our calendar. Um, so we want to just really leverage the heck out of the Smithsonian while it's here and uh, you know make as much as we can for the community in the off season. Um, so some support we did get. I think it was five thousand dollars from what this body used to be. Is this is the mark? So we yeah. So so we did get uh, we did get five grand for that. And I think if we had ten or twelve thousand dollars more from the city, uh, that would help ensure that we would meet all of our our budgetary needs. Uh, we do have. Uh, we do have a sponsor from out of state that uh, has put five grand on the table for us and just says, you know, if you can raise the money that you need to, you can also have this five grand. So the quicker we get to, to what we need, the quicker we'll get what we need from some of the people um, that put it up on the table. So I'm really, Maybe I don't sound excited about this event. <laughs> uh, this is going to be. I know why that is. Um, the the thing that I keep saying to people is we're putting art to work. I've been in the arts for a long, long time, and we are going to bring every bit of real value out of every bit of art that that we bring uh, to this festival. And we're starting to branch out not only into things that are not art or history related, uh, we're putting together, we're starting to get the ripple effect of the Smithsonian. Um, so like, as a result of doing this uh, railroad exhibit, <clears throat> we're gonna be doing a job fair. And I was on the phone with BNSF today. Cool. Um, they've never been a part of a job fair here. Amtrak has never been a part of a job fair here. So we're not just doing jobs. Um, we're doing anywhere from 10th grade till you decide not to work anymore. So apprenticeships, scholarships, OJT, any opportunity that would support somebody at the beginning of their money-making journey to advance themselves economically, you want to do that right up to the SER program, which I don't know if you know about that, but this is a program where people over 50 can get paid and it doesn't go against any benefits. So we're, you know, full age spectrum economic opportunity with this and we wonder what the heck does this have to do with the Smithsonian? Well, you know, we're doing a panel discussion called the future of work because the nature of work in rural communities is changing and changing quickly. And so we're partnering with uh, the Colorado Office for the Future of Work, Colorado Broadband Office, the people who at the state level are aware of what's going on uh, in those areas to come down and be on these panel discussions so that we hear from them directly uh, what the future is shaping up to be so that the people who are interested in that kind of work sort of like rails to remote right um, so we've got art and then so many things that are starting to ripple off of this so um, a little bit of more support from you all would um, you'll probably get me about 10 or 11 more minutes of sleep per night on average. <laughs> um, so just to revisit our earlier discussion on funding amounts. So if we've already allocated five grand under the new ordinance, are we allowed to, you know, pull money from elsewhere? Uh, like, do we have to adhere to that 10K limit for a new event? No, um, under the new that was something that was set by the previous board. That's uh, not part of gotcha. any ordinance, previous or current. Um, but so as it stands now, uh, ten was it twenty ten percent of the slightly uh, tax goes to arts and cultural events. So it would be appropriate out of reserves potentially, which keep growing by the way, to uh, to acknowledge this request. But that's a decision you all can make and recommend. But as far as um, what's being requested, vis-a-vis -vis 
the funding that we have, we can make that happen if you guys approve the request. I just want to say thank you for doing this. This is really, really cool. Uh, I don't think you've, I've met you before. I'm Jason, but I've heard fantastic things about you from just about everyone I've ever talked to. So thank you for helping, you know, make this in our town. Yeah. yeah. Putting on some really, really cool stuff. So I'm having a blast. I mean, you know, it's 24 seven, I have to admit, but um, it, it's a lot of fun. And I think that it's, it touches on things, I mean, I won't go into it. Uh, it touches on a lot of stuff that isn't obvious. You know, to use the Smithsonian to close the gap between youngers and olders. Having our name next to Smithsonian, I was really excited to see that. And I didn't even realize that there was career opportunities tied into this somehow. So that's pretty cool. There's so like, I won't bore you. But there are so many things that you would wonder, well, how the heck is this even related? It's related because when you knock on a door and the, one of the first two or three words is Smithsonian, people are inclined to just say yes. So I am getting yeses for all kinds of things. And we've already got two or three events that are going to happen as a result of the Smithsonian being here in January, February. So if I heard you right, you're requesting ten to twelve thousand. If you had that, you would get the five thousand yeah. laying on the table. Yeah, and we've got Phil Long's going to be on board. Um, you know, our top tier is five grand, and we try to keep it accessible. We've also got a two hundred dollar. So as I said, we're doing this festival guide, ten thousand copies that we're distributing in Wareville, Los Angeles, and Colfax counties on the backs of those members. There's expense involved with that, but uh, they are already distributing. So rather than reinventing the distribution wheel, we're just partnering with the people who already do that. Um, so I think we've got all, everything in place. Our media partnerships are rock solid. I think today was my fourth interview on, on with Eli. Um, we just said we're not we're not leaving anything on the table. We're touching as much as we can. Um, we really want to have the best Smithsonian traveling exhibit that the Smithsonian has ever registered on their on their scale. And I think that we're we're well on our way. What is your last name, Joe? Collins. Collins. Okay, so you'll want to you may be happy to know that we are scheduling more screenings of five states of Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, we have one here. We just nailed one down at the senior center today. Uh, we're doing one at TSC. My aim is to get six over a six week period. If we hit that number, we will be screening that film two more times than it has been screened in total so far since its production. We're trying to get A++ everywhere we go because having a Smithsonian, there are other traveling exhibits out there. Uh, Vanessa and I have already started to make this one. I'm gonna say I love working with her. She's like the other part of scissors. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, it's, um, but we want to, we want to start bringing more, the better we do with Smithsonian, the more noise we make with Smithsonian, the better position we are to win hosting other exhibits. Yeah. Um, so that's really one of the things we're trying to do. If we need another location for that, we can, we can talk after. I'm co-owner of the Wellwood Ryan Tucker, my main, and we'd love to have you. Awesome. Yeah, the theater are weird too. Yeah, so we've got Matriarch and Patriarch are both going to be at the theater. We wanted that to have a Ted Talk feel, um, screens, concessions, cool. chairs, you know. Yeah. So we're placing stuff all over, you know, but we are losing some venues. So I'm definitely um, in, in support of it, and especially if we can in the reserve account. Yeah, we can put a few of the reserve, so if you all think that's a good decision, me as city manager, this is not a funding level that we have to take. With your consent, I would take that as a direction to get support. So, I'll make a motion. Yeah, please. What's the motion? What we need to do tonight. What we need to do. We need money. The request was what, 10 to 12? 10 to 12. You can do more if you want. So I think we need a motion with a specific dollar. Yeah, 12. 12. 12. 12,000? If you'd have money on the table, I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Well, you know, here's the thing. We 
we're not looking for any one entity to fund this entire thing, right? Like, well, that's the kind of thing this board needs to look at, those kind of things, because it's, I mean, yes. it's, it's good for our locals, yeah. young and old, and, you know, it will, will draw us. So, just to clarify, the motion is to provide $12,000 of lodging tax reserves to support the Smithsonian event. Yeah, what you said. Yes. Second. I okay. the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Thank you. That's sure. Yeah. If anybody has any questions for me, I'm easily found. I think. I feel found. I feel findable. Please stand up. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep us informed on everything that's going on. Yeah, I, I mostly spend my time either here at the Mitchell or walking in between. So. Well, I'd like to tag on future agenda. Doesn't even have to be the next meeting, but generally. But just also refocus on what else we can do to promote this. Yeah, um, yeah I'm sure. You know, certainly don't want it to be it done locally. Um, I, I'd love to see the town really come out and check out all the stuff because, like, people will probably come to a lot of the central things, but um, that's really cool to be activating different spaces. And yeah. Yeah. Cool. And I will say that we designed this such that there are many reasons to be here on December 9th, one of which would be. Is our our community's first ever tractor parade with a Star Trek theme? It's called Tractor Trek. So dress up, show up. If you've got a tractor, I think you decided yesterday that it's okay. If it doesn't run, you can trailer it. Um, you know, our aim is to get the governor down here because you know that he loves Star Trek. So you dress in this here. I wonder. I wanted to get Grand Marshal, uh, so I have I have a bit in contact with his schedule. So now that it's one of the things that this little chunk of money helps to ensure that looking now we can do that. Because um, I would love for for Hollis to be down there. Cool. Cool. There are members on his staff up and down here too. He's got another display too. Yeah. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you. The agricultural is the number two driver in the state. Okay. Anything else on the Smithsonian exhibit? Well, let's go on to introduce and discuss tourism and incubator. I believe that is Jason. Yes. Yeah, so um, just after the last. I guess this summer we, we lost a lot of our long-standing events and we've had a couple of meetings um, about people who want to put on new events. And I think right now it's it's a little confusing. People are not sure what to do. Um, some people get frustrated. I think we might have you know missed the boat a little bit where someone had applied for money and wasn't contacted for like a month. So we wanna I just want to we want to make it easy. I use the word incubator or I'll be happy to assist, but I just kind of want to like make a page on the website. Let's break down what they need to do. You know, if we want to put money, what well, we do not have to, but like a, what they could get or how the process would look, you know, just so people understand because pretty much every event um, is going to be new. It's going to be new people doing it. We want to encourage it. We need it, you know, and that's, that's what we're here for. So I just want to make it easy for everyone. I get, I get asked all the time, you know, what, what the heck do I do? Where do I go? Where do I apply? How does this work? Do I come to a meeting? And you know, I think if we just broke it down really simply, you know, what we would like, people like to come to a meeting where we say, I thought I thought a presentation like what um, Brett did, what was fantastic, and maybe we put a time limit on it, on something like that, and we say what we're we're looking for, just so we don't get you know bogged down in, in you know four hour meetings or anything, but. Really, I'm just, I just want to make it easier on, on events. I think over the, the winter, people will start thinking about the summer. And I would, I would love if um, someone applies for um, online for the grant, um, everyone on the LTAB immediately gets notified. Okay. So we can start brainstorming on it and just skip the step. Is that possible? Online for the grant? There is a form you can fill out online right now for re requesting a grant. For, for lodging tax? Yeah. So we uh, we do two cycles, or we have historically, and that's a discussion that I think you all need to have eventually. 
as to the continuance of that. So the previous lobby tax board, um, towards the board, uh, they solicited a call for proposals to um, fund uh, first time events. And they would do recurring money, but my understanding, Marty, correct me if I'm wrong, is it was $10,000 for new events up to, and then $5,000 for recurring, recurring events. Yeah, now, as far as the city's role in those, we you know, recognize the benefit of providing some money, or at least the, the tourism board, that was their policy, um, to assist those events. Uh, the council is has made a policy decision to get away from donating to private events. Um, in fact, some of the events that we've seen that have gone away, um, we've requested over the years for those events to be self-sustaining. So the Blues Fest is a really good example of that, where there have been conversations going on for years of, yeah, we're going to give you $60,000 this year of taxpayer dollars, but ultimately you all need to figure out a sustainable way to make this your event. So I, I love that you're using the term incubator, Jason, because that's exactly what this money is meant to be. It's not meant to be... Um, you know, to support their event and provide that event on an ongoing basis. Besides that, though, the city for private events serves in a regulatory role. So it's Marty's job to get an application for an event. So anybody who wants to propose an event for the city can certainly put in an events application. Um, and what Marty does will circulate that around all of our directors for logistical concerns, road closures, that type of thing. Um, and I've got some other piece I want to add on there. Okay. Um, also, just every piece of someone wants to throw sure. a, a big festival here, it's very clear because yeah. there's people that are probably looking and trying to get information that we never hear from. Okay. And I would love for it just to be easier and more okay. clear and they can okay. do things online and just kind of understand how it works, um, who, who they would go to, you know, if it's it's Marty for this or if it's looking for a street closure, this is how this works. Yeah. Just it's 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 all information that's that's shared around in some circles, but I would love if it's easier, and then yeah. also right. let everyone know that it, it is So maybe what we do, Jason, is put something on the website. Yeah. Um, well, more or less, you know, just, just yeah. make the process extremely straightforward. Everyone knows what yeah, to it's do. Really some kind yeah, of a timeline. Yeah, I think it's, it's just it's all in lots yeah. of different places, you know. If you could just yeah. make it in, a, in a, an event festival application page, maybe a and that's there, where there's funding involved, maybe there's not, but I think I just I hear that yeah a, a lot and I know it's well I've, I've done it personally and it's well even if we even made it more visible so they had to dig for it. Yeah, it is exactly a lot of people not you you we want to encourage we want to encourage events, you know, yeah. we need new stuff well, to replace it. Part of so the problem of the these are from the old was website and it can be electronic. The the consistency of the different board members moving in and out in time. COVID was a big gap. So there was a lot of things that kind of fell through the cracks. But the fact that you, at least the impression was you couldn't get a grant unless you were going to spend it all on advertising. Yeah. Now, there, you know, obviously, you know, money is fluid. If you have, if you're spending money on advertising, you know, with something else, and you have that coming in, you know, you can. You exchange it now. We don't have that problem because it's been rewritten. That's so one of the concerns. So under the previous ordinance, um, money that was given out for private events could only be spent on marketing and advertising. That it could be for operational costs. Um, it could be, you know, in, in some semblance of a partnership where we're saying we want to commit lodging tax dollars to promote this event because we see the benefit for our community. What Trinidad really lacks, and what's been a concern of mine since I started here a year ago. We don't have a parks and rec department. In most cities, they have uh, events staff and events coordinator that not only puts on city events from their parks and rec department, but also um, does exactly what you all are talking about. So Marty's kind of been filling that gap, but with the change in our lodging tax structure and potentially our lodging tax increase, um, one of the key positions that I'd really like to create under that quality of life button, uh, bucket, but would be um, some semblance of a, a full-time events coordinator who not only would focus on coordinating the Rad Fest, coordinating Santa Fe Trail Days if we take that over as a city event, but also be the liaison with private entities for, for their events as well. And so uh, it's kind of defaulted to Marty outside of her job description, and that's really a, a structural issue here at the city. 
but um, in the meantime, I think your suggestion, Jason, is really good. We can definitely give up our information on our website on if you want to put an event on here in the community, here's the process and put some, some sort of a process map together. And I think the, the last piece that I wanted to add, yeah. um, our, 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 our staging and, and lighting and sound equipment now, if, yeah. <laughs> Would we want to say what it would cost to rent it, or I really would like to let people know that once we have it, you know, obviously, yeah. I think that's a huge asset, and that and that's, that makes any event a lot easier to put on, just knowing that they're not going to need to get someone from the Springs or, or Pueblo that can that do this stuff, you know, and Jason JC can do it, and if they're comfortable with it, maybe put their hourly rate, like let people start to, to put this together financially. Mm -hmm. um, and see if it works yeah. kind of before they come in here and ask this question. I'm just trying to make it easier, straightforward. Appreciate it. Yeah, and I, love, I love that. And what I, I like to do the events. Well. Yeah, when we, to we, continue. If, um, we get to that lodging tax increase in November and we're able to create that semblance of a parks and rec department, I'm not even opposed to you guys looking at that events coordinator position description in the future. We're capturing everything that oh, matches the goals. Oh. And, and what that might do, and if, if we establish something that we didn't have uh, and, and cause some problems, is you know this is basically what you're going to be able to get. You know whether it's you know we have a maximum the first year or those things, uh, and that it you know you do have to maintain you know the event yourself eventually, or you know it, it might fade away and something replace it, uh, and that caused some jealousy. Between some of the bigger events all over time, so that you know this festival was you know well they're getting more than we're getting and all that stuff, and that would avoid that problem. It's kind of what I brought up about the radio. I mean, it, there was a, there was when I first got here, there was so much controversy. The theater was upset because Blues Fest was getting this, Blues Fest wasn't getting what this one was getting, and it was it stifled things you know for a while. It was just a you know, it, it, what do you do? What does that board do? You know, and then you got problems on the board with people. With the town this size, it's going to be hard to have not be attached to something. You know, a winter fest or different things. So, just, with just that just idea, transparency is really good. And yes, if we're comfortable having pricing right. online, so everyone knows they're getting the same pricing, so everyone just feels treated fairly, which is yeah, exactly. Like you all set the policy and make sure you're. Yeah, so I just wanted to see how everyone felt about that. I know he's probably not willing to take the lead on it, but okay. I just want to make it easier for events next summer, so we're, we're popping next summer, because the summer was a little quieter then. So would you we just create more work for <laughs> <laughs> Probably me. Oh, uh, I was thinking of this. I think uh, maybe when we have that meeting with Anissa, um, let's, let's talk about how we can... Uh, <coughs> create that process map on our website in the meantime. I can go pull everything I can find and write up how I feel, okay. and then we could discuss, add, edit, and then Anissa could add it to the website. It's fine. Some done products, so it's not more work for her. I think the processes are there. If someone wanted to come and have an event, we're we're going to work with them and make sure it happens. I just don't think, to your it's point, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit where you're not. We can work on that. That's what we need. For sure. OK. Cool. Okay. I, will, I will work on that. Anything else on the subject? Uh, no, that was it. I have to go get my dog, so thank you. Okay. I'm probably hear him barking from here. You want it Thursday? Yeah. Uh, let me. Uh, I'll text you. Yeah, I'll text you. Okay. All right, thank you, everybody. Don't forget my email. Yeah. I, will do, I, will do that. I will do that before I go to bed, I promise. Thank you. Um, all right, last on the new business is discussion of city staff on the L. And that was also yeah, that, that one was also me as well. So um, I'm just looking for some some clarity on some stuff. We've touched on little pieces of it here and there, but I'm just a little bit unsure, I guess. Um, so I guess I'll just maybe start asking questions, and Steve can probably help me answer it. But one, um, so for is every budget um, um, on. On, on the LTAB budget, are we, do we review and vote on, on everything? Are there certain items that we do not vote on? Or like, for example, is there a certain amount of money that can be spent elsewhere that we do not vote on? 
Yeah. Uh, no. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. Okay. So you all are an advisory board. So right. um, really, your your role is to advise council on spending uh, lobbying tax dollars. The big thing for me and the intent, I think, of the council in adopting the ordinance was um, as we go into budget season for you to draft uh, an annual budget for the council's consideration. And that really, to me, is the biggest role of this group, aside from you know a lot of the considerations you guys are doing for our community. Um, and I apologize. Normally, we would, um, not that you are normal, because this is your first year, but in perfect times, we would have started having these discussions with you in August. But we don't know about the uh, lodging tax increase in November. So we don't want to put a lot of time into talking about budget numbers. Um, and at one point, we, Cheryl, our finance director, and I had talked about well, maybe we put together two budgets, one at 6%, one at 3%. It's a lot of work. So I, I think where, where we really uh, could use you all on recommendations, including on recommending staffing as it pertains to use of lodging tax funds, will be after November 7th when we know if that ballot question passes. But what I'd really like to suggest to you all is we have a regular meeting scheduled, but I think you all might want to schedule some special work sessions that are just budget-based. We'll bring Cheryl in, um, invite the council to come to those so you all can talk about um, what our projections are for 2024 in lodging tax and how we might spend those revenues. Uh, sure, okay, so I think my, my question was a little bit different. Okay. I'll on some of it, but sure. um, uh, I guess one thing, for example, um, so we, I think what one of our very first meetings, and, and Martin brought up, we were, and I thought we were going to vote on if we wanted to either um, redesign the visitor guide or or just kind of update it and, and keep what we had. And then um, I, we did not vote, and I believe there's an RFP out, so I was con confused by that. So um, is, is that okay? So like some things can have RFPs kind of on their own. That, I guess just the clarity of kind of what we we I you know what we're on it and vote on versus just um, you know it's like stuff from yeah, stuff from staff. Does, does that make sense? It does make sense. Yeah, yeah. So so just some clarity behind it would be helpful. It's in that ether right now. Of um, if you look at, I think it's I can't tell you the exact section, but I think it's letter E from the lodging tax ordinance. The council voted to keep the budget the same for this year. Um, so the goal is to administer the budget as currently put forth by the previous lodging tax board, but when you all adopt the budget for 2024, it'll be different. I believe we had money budgeted for updating the visitor's guide that was already established, so staff takes that as direction from the policymakers to move forward with that. Got it, because it was already in the Because it was already in the 2023. Okay, yes, yeah. yeah. since so yeah. that was made before us. I mean, Chris, that was a priority of you all, right, on that previous lodging tax board. Got it, that, that answer, that's, that's really my question on that. Yeah. Well, it Please. does. I mean, I think I still know what your answer is, um, which is, and I, I mean, to me, this makes sense because yeah. we only meet every two weeks. We can't be directing every single thing that city staff might be managing. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah. like, there's going to be nebulous areas still where the line item is marketing and advertising. Right. It's not going to have every single activity underneath it. Um, I, I know. So that's kind of, I think, what Jason's getting. Yeah. It's like there will be activities that are being executed without our awareness potentially, sure. um, and just trying to understand exactly where we fit in. Terms I of guess it. it just depends. Uh, I mean, so like looking at the city council, they'll uh, allocate a budget for public works for road paving, but we don't go to council every time we yeah. pop it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know. Us as staff, we, we take our policy direction from the allocated budget, and certainly your goals and priorities are what we're being mindful of in what we administer, um, and, and council as well. Uh, I, I would hate to see us have to get into a situation where we come to you with every you yeah. know, expenditure that we Yeah, well, I, that's, that's kind of not what I meant. No, I mean, so, 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 sort, of, sort of what I meant by that. Of yeah. course, I don't think any of us want that, but it's not yeah. pertaining to. Yeah. I feel like I previously heard there was like a three, if it's under three thousand dollars, you know, then yeah, it's just daily expense no, or stuff, or is there anything like that? Or my, anything my under a thousand dollars can be bought at best attainable price. Yeah. Anything between one and five thousand dollars has to have three quotes. In okay. quotes, anything between okay. five and twenty thousand dollars has to have three formal quotes. 
Um, okay. Yeah, anything between 20 and 50 has to be three informal bids, and anything over $50,000 has to be competitively bid. So that's all under our procurement code. So we have to uh, follow processes to get the best attainable price for any procurement that we do. And then anything, any expenditure over $50,000 requires city council. So it's any expenditure, not necessarily a product or a service or yeah, exactly. Whatever. Any okay. So we basically, I mean, at a high level, we can't purchase anything without at least getting quotes for it. Um, and even if it's under a thousand dollars, we encourage our staff to, um, you know, still get quotes for that to make sure <coughs> better pricing. So, but we can certainly have more of this discussion. I, I totally get what you're getting at, Jason. But as we go into the 2024 budget and establish those line items and your priorities. Uh, the budget detail that we establish, we like to, as much as possible under each line item, put the specific uses for what that line item would be. Um, and that's what we would be looking for you. So if you say we have a professional services line item and we want $175,000 of it to go into a marketing and an advertising RFP, but we'd also like to put $20,000 into it for another company to come in, um, our job then would be to find a company to do that um, that twenty thousand dollars worth of work, but you would have established the policy to spend that money. If that makes okay. sense, gotcha, gotcha, totally. Yeah, um, and we can definitely get into the weeds when you guys go into the twenty twenty four budget. And I, I would actually prefer that. I'd love to see every single line item that you all recommend and approve um, have that detail below it. This is exactly what we want this spent on, and then we'll have our meetings with you all every couple of weeks, and we can inform you about the process. Certainly for high level initiatives like we're doing marketing and advertising RFP, I would like you all to be involved in the evaluation of those contractors and be part of the selection of that. Um, so hopefully that helps a little bit. It, it does, okay. yeah. And I guess just the just the last part of that was just um, yeah. like you and Marty's role in this versus, versus our role in here. Like, do you think you can use a really quick brief, brief summary of kind of yeah. you guys and how you work with us versus what we do on the mayor our as well. Um, and the mayor so, as well. Okay. Yeah, because he's, he's a liaison to the board and he can be here today. But um, really, our role is to facilitate the meetings and give you guys information to make informed decisions. That's that's what our role is. Okay. Uh, your role is to be advisory to the city council and provide them recommendations as to how we should move forward and extend the lodging tax. So it's in strictly advisory. It's not off that we don't have any authority. No, correct. We, don't have any we just make the <laughs> yeah. and, and we need to have those liaisons to figure out how the city works and how they exactly. pass things. We're like the voice of the community yeah. Yeah. and business owners to say, thought about this, this would be good. What does this mean? But certainly, it also it's appropriate for you all to volunteer to assist, and, and you guys do that by attending these meetings and some of the other things mm -hmm. that you're working on. Um, so, you know, we we will work with the city council, work with you. But I think the, the key thing in this is just we're in that weird ether where we're you know transitioning from a previously established budget that Marty and I are administering um, to what you all set as the policy and the budget for next year. Okay. And then I think uh, as far as staffing goes, um, depending on what happens with our lodging tax change, again, I'd like to see some reorganization in our city structure in general, and that would likely mean city managers not sitting here at your meetings every time. Sure. Um, Marty's transitioning into a role to be more of a manager of this facility, do some other things, so we can have those discussions as we move forward. Okay. No, that, that, that was perfect. Okay. I have one thing to add to that. Please. When you refer to the bubble board, if it's positive, you can point at me. But if uh, <laughs> it's negative, you just ignore that. the biggest And you guys have the biggest hearts out of any board I've ever heard. So you all wanted to do the best things for your cats. So thank you for that. Yeah, I got, I've enjoyed watching the evolution, having sat on that board for four years. Yeah. And then I did watch, you know, uh, Tom's you know, recordings of the events and, and watching it, it was interesting. It's y'all grown a lot in the last you know, few months that, you know, and, and what you're offering and things. Yeah. And I think it's a good idea to get, to find out who's responsible for what, because it is a group. Yeah. It's not an individual. We have a chairman that keeps us, you know, in line and out of trouble, but <laughs> right. it's a group. And, uh, all that. and the last thing I'll say is you all have seen 
current year's budget, and there's line items under that to go to specific things. All of that can be up in the air. So when we find out what happens in November, we can restructure the budget to align with the new ordinance, with uh, your goals, the council's goals, and make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah, we are going to be extremely busy. You are <laughs> from like November to February. You are. Oh, yeah. We are um, the best finance director in the world, so you're in good hands. I can tell you that much. So I think everybody's okay with that expansion. Quick meetings and just to know what to do, pass on stuff, do what we got to do. What I do now. I think uh, that's <laughs> actually, that's actually um, the most important thing that we can do is just get this RFP yeah. through and let them start on January 1st. Yeah. And then yeah. we're really going to set ourselves up good for spring and summer. Awesome. Yeah, uh, so the RFP, we did that. So if someone in the summer, as soon as you email me that, I'm emailing it to somebody else so we know it's ready. Okay. It'll uh, be issued on the 20th. Yeah. If I don't get up the 20th, you know, that oh, well, I actually probably need it by Tuesday so that I can get it to them so that they can yeah. do their printing process. I'll have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's good. Have to do the it's easy to have to. Yeah. All right. Any more questions about stack roles or the flag rules? Mm -hmm. Nope. All right. Let's go on to miscellaneous and board members. Anybody have anything? I only get some gear in this meeting. Oh, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll just grab some the way down. Um, I don't have any this week. Um, I, I got part of mine answered when I was asking you about oh, yeah, what yeah. you did. Because I wanted. Huh? Yeah, the band question. Yeah, oh, it is that. that. No, the. Uh, I, I, I never did understand what it was that, that you were trying to do, that obviously you were able to get the credit card and stuff right. Um, I don't want to do it now because it's too late, but would there be a time to explain it to yeah, um, somebody that was really a short sure. summary? Um, Facebook and Instagram video ads to attract tourists off the highway and to get, to get people here. So it's when you're looking at Facebook or you're going down the side and we be advertising, advertising. Yeah. 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 downtown Monument Lake, golf course, is just there the same thing? All oh, that kind of stuff. Bike, exactly. biking, hiking, yeah, that kind of stuff. So. So that you do need the videos and stuff. Yeah, this is something the marketing um, agency will be doing, and me and Joe offer to do it in Toronto. Yeah. I mean, I started in, in April. You know, things take a little bit longer, and some things got wonky here and there. Um, so I was hoping it would be for the summer, um, right? Because I was I was concerned on visitor traffic for the summer. Do you feel it just understanding it was why it didn't happen, or understanding how to work with the city financially, or? Um. Well, just getting a hold of the assets and, and, and sharing them and the processes are a little bit different with, yeah. with, with the city. Um, yeah, I mean, we can't just go in and create an ad account under our own personal right. stuff. Um, so yeah, it's specifically, I mean, I'm straight up not trying to point fingers at anybody, but it's go ahead. getting access from the city, get, basically getting the keys to the castle. So, like, this is the kind of stuff that this marketing role that would handle. Um, right, just, because they can everyone's short staff, everyone's wearing so many yeah, hats you know, and, just just trying to do a lot of stuff. And, and, and it's tough and this person would, because it's going to say things going to happen with the agency, they're going to need to get access, you know? And well, it's new enough. Want, we want it to happen fast. It, so. It's new enough. I mean, it, it amazes me when I see, you know, some of the ads I see, uh, I have a game I play, Kill Town on my phone, you know, and like, the ad will come out. Um, rarely do you see a city and stuff on it because the bureaucracy within government. It, it, I get a lot of it also it's part yeah. because I've been Here's researching and looking on ways so to do it. But, but what you see a lot of from, um, and I think we should definitely recommend to the agency is you can pay um, for they make just like a little blog post monthly events going on. Just a real simple, here's what's going on in Fort Collins in July. Here's Steamboat in February and stuff like that. It's real easy. As a profile that I can show people what's going on. Um, that is then it is linked to their credit card, so that's all down in the back end here. Um, so, so yeah, it's just like getting that access to their own profile. Yes. Well, I, I don't know if I'm time, but I really was willing to to learn more about that. Yeah, we're, we're just trying to help interim before 
we could get an agency on because we know it takes time. That's what my daughter does for Cubus yeah. uh, Communications in, in uh, Amarillo. It is learning that, and she keeps trying to explain it to me, but I, I quit listening to her a long time. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah, it's not, not, not so scary once you get into it. And we can look at all this information now on here, so this is a really important piece. Um, Moving forward, so. Anyone yeah. else got this lady sentence? Um, I do. I have um, next Thursday, this Thursday, we're going to give her to the meet, uh, winter uh, media reception that is being hosted by our tourism office. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa said she's going to work on Winterfest. You will want to Yes, I guess her and Lisa from Winterfest. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I would need Kim to be telling me about for Smithsonian. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and show up, I'm going to put our little magnets in their gift bags, and then I'm going to go to a party for a couple of hours with over 40 journalists um, and contributors, editors and contributors for local for Colorado publications, I believe. Um, That's awesome. And the thought is to get them, to encourage them to come down, come to an event, write a blog, write an article, do something. So I'm going to try to talk to all of them and get them to come down here. Might eventually be able to, with contacts, do a fan tour where you created it just for those writers. Mm -hmm. You know, bring them down and take them to the, you know, different things. The only other thing I have is in January, on the 20th and the 21st, there is a Travel Adventure Expo in Denver um, that we have a table at. Um, with the Colorado Tourism Office, they have like a big booth where they have like 10 tables set up and you get partners to come in and get a table. So we did get a table for that. Um, we'll be attending that. I don't know if they have like a number of people they can attend or like can two of us go or is it just one? It's one space. It doesn't, one space. It doesn't say whether or not you have multiple people. I'm just saying it is one space though, so you don't want too many. We may want to put that on a future agenda to have you all talk about who you'd like to delegate to the event. Yeah. Ashley's already filled out the form, so she's going to be there. Okay. Well, um, it's it's time. Time. Yeah, it's 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 time. Time. Yeah. So that might be a question for, um, what's his name? Is it Jeff Jason? What, what is his name? I don't remember. Andrew? No, uh, this is the tour. It's Tour Colorado. Okay. Uh, so it's not the CTO office. Oh, it's actually no, doing it. It's Tour Colorado. It's, it's a, a business, but within that expo, CTO has a section. Sure. And part of that, she gives like a discounted rate over 10 Yes. Yeah. So, so that's what we got. So there's 10 exhibitors in that section, and we got one of them. Yes. Well, those, those kind of things would be something that we would set a budget for, and we decide to go. We don't have to get further permission to go each one. You know, take that. That would be it. A lot of them have grants. And yeah. They, they prefer a rural community, so yeah, we could all, we give you a grant for a good bit of these. Booth is there. Nisa said she'll give me the stuff that I need for the booth. I'm sure she will help in that too. Can you stand on that at the festival again? What conference is it? It is the um, oh, uh, Tourist. Uh, uh, let me look at it. It's an ice. This is third day. No, this is a uh, travel adventure show. Mm -hmm. It is in Denver. What's the number? Travel and adventure show. Sorry. Cool. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. It's what do you what do you what are you leaving for on Thursday? What are you going to? Do? Um, that is a CTO hosted media winter media reception. Okay. Um. That is at the Limelight Hotel downtown. Why do you want to see that? would be interesting. Cool. That's all I have. Those things. Um, anybody have any more miscellaneous? No. All right, then let's move on to the agenda. So for the agenda next week, Joe, do we have a couple of things? I'm going to have to go to you because I know you're. Um, I believe that we already said we wanted to put on there. Our piece done. Um, 
Well, the one thing I brought up was Smithsonian promotion. So what can we be doing to just promote and advertise that? I'm sure that at least has that on their list. They're already working together. But anything we can do just to support that. Um, also, I uh, sent an email to the Learning Speak Up. Um, I'm going to ask to add onto the agenda. Um, Lisa gave me a to do list. We're going to get that shot over to you guys if you can review it between now and then. Just take a look and we'll discuss that because it's, it's kind of a lot of marketing jargon. Uh, so, <laughs> is this general? general <laughs> today? Uh, it's just like it's different to do lists for things that are like talking ones, destination, stewardship, for it's You'll get it in your email. All right. Um, what she she uh, yeah, so that to do list we can go over and discuss what they mean and what, you know, designate who's going to do what or chop it up or try to work on that for her. It's something she needed. I think some of it has to do with like the Wish app as well. So that's some stuff in there. Just if I don't know if Anissa is available, but if we can have her here on uh, that, yeah. so she can clarify what she needs, that'd be great. We need to put on more discussion about the light show as that moves forward. Um, we we voted. voted. Yeah, we voted, but it's right. going to lose. Somebody's got to. We'll, we'll provide that in a staff report going forward, but I think we have the direction from you all. We need to. So you all will be taking it over now that we vote. Okay. Yeah, and certainly involving you. But yeah, we'll work on the contracts, coordinating with Brett, all of that stuff. Okay. We did can, so we don't have to put that on. Exactly. We did can. Um, I would suggest on the next agenda, it'd be a good opportunity for you all to talk about times in November and December to have budget discussions. Um, maybe we can get those meetings established. So if you'll bring your calendars at the next meeting, that would be good. Yes. Yeah, we yes. should yes. also we print something more next week on Oh yeah. Yeah, that'd be on the agenda. Um special meetings generally we'll have a review yeah. RFP. I meetings. just put it as a topic special meetings, um, and then that gives us flexibility to have the discussion. The RFP would be out before we uh, have meetings by a few days. So I just have one thing I need to say. So tomorrow I will announce the uh, selection of the entity that was successful for the RFP for the travel, mm -hmm. um, the new travel yeah. So um, I can tell you it is co-marketing. I will have that out first thing in the morning and, and announce that. Cool. Um, and so we'll begin that process. Yeah, they were in the mix on the last marketing RFP. Yeah, okay, so I would expect them to provide a proposal for that as well. They were one of the lowest priced options. We actually received one that was what twice. Twice the other, no. other two. So we're we're definitely saving money, but I feel like we're getting quality of service. You know, one of the good things about not putting a budget or attaching a budget to yeah. that RFP. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Anything else from the team? Well, it looks no. like now that I'm sure that more things will drop on. <laughs> yes. If you have anything, just... And Joe has the best yes. chat ever. Yeah, um, one thing <laughs> that I chatted with Ashley about yesterday is maybe we should put like a, a deadline on when we want to um, add stuff to an, an agenda and get it posted ahead of time so we're not hitting this last minute thing. Yeah, we, like that we cannot miss any of these meetings yeah. coming up because they're just with the RFP, it's, it's really important. Yeah, so yeah. Maybe if we all just pick, pick a day, you know. So, I know everyone's really busy, so if we have it, we do that earlier. Like, maybe can we try to have, like, no one adds anything after the Monday before the meeting, and we, and we post it on Wednesday as a goal, so that we've got a couple extra days if something goes wrong, but we're not. Okay. And, you know, get, someone's getting it on their desk last minute when they're, I'm sure they already have a full workload. Yeah. So, so then let's do this. Deadline for adding items to the agenda will be the 16th. If that's okay. Um, we'll have it posted by the 18th. And the agenda, Joe, you said you're putting it in the share drive. Um, okay. I said we should. Uh, we should. So I have created a folder for that. Yeah. So now there's a folder. Can we establish that on the right? So the 16th is the Tuesday before or whatever. Right. So we can get day rather than the day. Okay. That way we can follow that 
So it's going to be a week Monday. So the Monday between our eight, meetings. Eight days prior to the next Yeah, there you go. So that's when additions are due, yeah. sent for review then a week prior. Yeah. And yeah. generally, we want to get the agenda published no later than the Friday before the Tuesday meeting. All right. That's why I say if the if we have it eight days before, yeah. we want to have our final review done by six days before, yeah. and then it'll be posted four by four days. Four or five days before. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. Good. Uh, any, uh, anything else on the uh, agenda? If not, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Right, and all in favor? Aye. 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 I have a rat for everyone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we have all these extra rats.